that we're under. You say, oh, Pastor, you don't believe in astrology. No, what I believe in are spirits that are represented as stars, and I believe those spirits have power over children of disobedience. That's what I believe in. And so I, I want to strongly encourage you, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being mean about this issue. Was it a false flag? Was it crisis actors? Was it a CIA op? Was it a secret op of this and that and the other? The, the only thing, and I've said this before, the only thing that really irritates me, and I, and I see it as being detrimental to the cause of the gospel, is when information is passed off as if it were true and it's not true and you told or you passed on something that wasn't true you told a lot you told a fib is what you did but you're expecting every you get mad at people when they won't listen to you and and that hurts you and i will say that it hurts the gospel and so why won't I pass stuff like this along? Because I don't know that it's true. I can't verify it. I can't pull out the documents. Now, if there was a, a documented trail that linked this guy, like say he was in black ops in the CIA, I'm going, you know what? Maybe there's something there. But short of having that, what I do know for a fact is that this Bible's right. And I see the footprint and I know the spirit is at work in this guy, or was, he's now screaming in hell. That's what I know, and that's what I'm gonna tell. And if, and if, and whatever I do, whatever conspiracy theory I come up with, I can show you from the scriptures, and you go, you know what? That's cool, you mean all that's in the Bible? Yeah, it's like, it's like been in there, you know, forever. Then people are drawn, not to me, to the scriptures. King James Bible. I got a test. I want to read some emails. I got a testimony. Uh, a guy called in, and I didn't take the message. Uh, Kay was telling me about it this morning. She said this guy was Roman Catholic to the core, and he goes in a laundromat and in uh, somewhere, and there in the laundromat are some DVDs from this guy named Mike Hogg something. And there's different, they're just laying there. Somebody left them there. No, not by accident, on purpose. And, and I'm doing this, I wanna encourage you to do this. They left them there at the laundromat. And this guy who is Roman Catholic is just scanning this and all of a sudden his eyes lay upon um, Another Spirit, Parts 1 and 2. That's the DVD that was laying there. And he said, for some reason, I just picked that one up. And I took it home. And he said, I watched it. And he went, oh. he went back to the laundromat and got the rest of the DVDs and took them home and watched them. And he, these, then he was watching Jesus Christ DNA and the Holy Bible. And you know what? And, and, and I, 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 Kay was telling me this in the morning. I was trying to drink coffee. You know how that is. If I remember right, this guy is like all over the King James Bible now. That's why I do what I do. I want you to see that this most amazing of all things in the world and see, I don't live where this guy lives. But now he's got, a, he's got the word of God to train him and to lead him to Christ. Is he saved? <laughs> I don't see how he's not going to be. Not because of me, but because of the word of God. And it was that that drew him to that book. And so my encouragement to everybody out there, number one, if you're going to post anything on Facebook, if you're going to post anything about what's going on in the world, give them scripture verses. That's all you got to do is give them scripture verses. Show them some of the neat things that nope, they won't hear in churches because pastors just don't believe the book anymore. Show them that stuff, all right? 
Uh, let's do some emails. I haven't done this in a while. Lori! How you doing, Lori? Good to hear from you. I've only been, I've been truly enjoying the fourth kingdom study and doing my own study on angels uh, and wings. I cannot find scripture that specifically states that angels have wings other than the cherubim and the seraphim. Now, let me, I've already read your email a while ago, so I'm going to kind of deal with this a piece at a time, Lori. They're angels. Cherubim and seraphim are angels. Um, and then you say, um, Let's see here. Cherubim, seraphim, but I don't think those types of angels are anywhere but heaven at present. Even Lucifer is a is fallen from heaven. He isn't stated to have flown down. Perhaps this is why they need spaceships or some other way to travel through the dimensions. Question mark. You mentioned that perhaps they had their wings clipped. I wonder if they have wings at all. Jesus doesn't have or seem to need wings to travel once he rose from the dead. Any thoughts or scripture reference that I missed? Well, here's here's what I'm going to share with you. Number one. Lucifer, in, in, in regards to your question, whether or not Lucifer has wings, he does. He was, he was a cherub. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. And if you look at how that expression is used in the King James, you'll see that um, over the throne of God are two cherubims with their wings enfolded over the Ark of the Covenant, covering the Ark of the Covenant. And so it's like this idea, I, number one, Lucifer, the dragon, has wings because he was a cherub, and cherubs have wings. So do seraphs, they have wings. So does the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, has wings. And so that's, that's kind of, that's where I'm going with this. The idea that the wings were plucked off, I see as Lucifer falling from heaven. Why? I think he gets his wings plucked off, or that's just a theory that I have. So I hope, hope I helped you out with that. All right, um, Monica, how you doing? I'm resubmitting a question from last week about the sop that Jesus gave Judas in John 13:26:30, because the sop is watered down bread. I wondered if this might have any reference to the false translations of today. You know, it's, I, I don't know, but I, I like your thinking. You're looking at the, the symbolic nature of things that are being done in the scripture, and you have Jesus dipping bread into the sop, which was, um, if I remember, like from the Passover idea, they had, they had bitter herbs mixed together. That's what I think that sop was. Um, I'd have to do a little bit more, more look into that. Uh, your email goes on to say, I struggle with uh, that thought as Jesus himself gave the bread to Judas because Jesus is the bread of life. I've been warning about the spiritual significance of this passage, especially since SOP is only mentioned uh, four times uh, in the Bible. Not, not bad. Not bad. Um, I would have to, uh, you know, the idea of him dipping the bread in there um, you know, I'd, I'd have to really ponder that. I, I, I kind of get what your idea. Once you dip the bread in there, it's, it makes the bread soggy. Now you have a mixture of whatever fluid that was and the bread. You have a mixture of that, a bitterness. Um, so it's, you know, it's not a, and you're, and the idea of Jesus giving it to Judas, uh, just off the top of my head, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And so even the false doctrines that are out there and the false movements, God uses Babylon to administer those. Babylon is a golden cup in the Lord's hand. He pours it out. to He's pouring out false doctrine to people who don't want to believe the truth to begin with. So that's just kind of where I'm going with it, all right? Uh, anyway, good to hear from you, Monica. Bill, Pastor Mike, once again, thank you for properly feeding us the Word of God. Uh, last week, you showed a picture of an album cover with the Twin Towers on 9-11 written above them, only to see this upside down. Here is scripture. Please read Isaiah 29, 16. Let me open up my Bible to Isaiah. Now, is that would that be in the King James, Bill? I'm just kidding. Isaiah 29, 16 says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. I like it. Okay. Also want to mention that the Watchmen video series just keeps getting better and better with each new episode. Here's scripture that might tie in with the North Country. Read Job 1-7. Uh, 
Uh, have a great broadcast today, Bill. Job one seven. There's Job. What does one seven say? I gotta lick my fingers. Um, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. Okay, I, yeah, I like that. That's a good. That's a good. And he, Satan himself, is telling you that he walks to and fro. What you know? What was said about the the roaring lion walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, like a ranging bear. Uh, by the way, study Power Rangers if you want a kind of little heads up on the future of the Watchman broadcast. Power, because I'm talking about powers. Power Rangers. The Ranging Bear. Think about that. All right. Uh, let's see here. Up, 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 up. Greetings, Pastor Mike. This is from Joshua. Seems the spirit behind musicians are getting more and more flagrant with the message they spread these days. Check out these lyrics right from the tongue of the serpent, Katy Perry, and her song, Roar. Uh, let's see here. Um... I used to bite my tongue and hold my breath, scared to rock the boat and make a mess. So I sat quietly, agreed politely. I guess that I forgot I had a choice. I let you push me past the breaking point. I stood for nothing, so I fell for everything. This is Katy Perry singing. I guess I ought to do it like, like a song. Uh, so here's, I'm going to sing it. I don't, I don't, I've never heard this song, so I don't know how it goes. So maybe this will be close. You held me down. But I got up Already brushing off the dust You hear my voice You hear that sound Like thunder gonna shake the ground You hold me down But I got up Get ready cause I've had enough I see it all I see it now I got the eye of the tiger A fighter dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar Louder, louder than a lion cause I am a champion and you're gonna hear me roar oh 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 you're gonna hear me roar how did I do I see I've never heard the song so I don't I don't know how it goes anyway Grover says, think you keep, uh, oh, that's my, I used to could do Grover really well. I can't do Grover anymore. Thank you for keeping on standing for the King James Bible. I can't do it. I've lost my Grover. The Bible itself provides irrefutable proof that the King James Bible is the original purified word of God preserved forever and that all English translations of the Bible since 1611 are completely disqualified from being called the word of God. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, okay. Um, King James Bible is the original purified word of God preserved forever. Interesting. I wonder what's behind that. I don't know. Just if you got any more, I want to see it. Uh, Reg says, several PMO shows ago, you asked us to find what scripture has to say about the Bema judgment seat. Uh, you're a busy man and probably forgot about it. No, I didn't, understandably, but I'm just wondering if you plan to talk about it sometime. Thanks, Pastor, for everything you do, and may God bless you, your family. The question that I asked.